Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about Laravel migrations and foreign keys inside of those migrations. Because I see a few typical errors that people are making which cause the migrations to fail or potentially cause bugs in the future because there are different kinds of syntax how to write the migrations. So imagine foreign keys, imagine the users table, default Laravel 8 totally fresh project and you need to have another table and foreign key to users. What syntax would you use? Here are the options. Foreign ID, that syntax was introduced from Laravel 7, so you specify the field, which is user ID, and then you have two options, either do constraint. Constraint means the same thing as references ID on the table of plural of this on users. So if your table name and field name follows all the default standards, so that field references the same as the table name of a parent, then you just use constraint and it's shorter for this one. But if, for example, your table is different, for example, authors, right, then you can put this here or constraint authors like this. So just the table name. Another important thing is if you want that field to be nullable, you have to pass the nullable not here, not after constraint, but before constraint. So here nullable, otherwise the migration will fail. And also pretty recently I found out about another syntax, which I haven't used myself, but it's pretty cool to have foreign ID 4. And here you specify not the field name, but the model. So model user class like this. I'm not exactly sure about the use case for that and it's not in the documentation but it was introduced in Laravel 8. Here I found it on GitHub, it was committed on September 4th this year by Taylor, so for Laravel 8 version. And a few more important things, especially for those who are using previous Laravel versions like Laravel 6 or migrated from Laravel 6 or 5 to Laravel 8. And if you had an older table of users for example and instead of ID it used to be a different syntax. So ID, if we click, that actually means big increments. And under the hood, it means unsigned big integer with auto increment. And here are two important things, unsigned and big integer. So for unsigned, remember if you specify the foreign key like this, so table integer user ID, and then table foreign. So that's a longer syntax how to specify the foreign key references id on users like this so if instead of foreign id you use field and then foreign key don't forget about unsigned so foreign key should not be integer it should be unsigned integer and then the second part of the story is big integer so from laravel 7 migrating from laravel 6 to laravel 7 there was one change in default migration when you run php artisan make migration it was this. So that was in Laravel 6 from what I remember. From Laravel 7 it changed to big increments. And the problem may arise that if your old table had this, which is integer, not a big integer, and from newer table you're trying to do foreign ID, which under the hood is big integer, then it will also fail. So in short, the foreign key type of the field should be identical to the ID of the parent table. It should be unsigned and it should be either both integer or either both big integer. And by default from Laravel 7, from what I remember, it's big integer by default. And final thing, what I see in Laracast quite a lot, people do something like this or even like this. They do just colon and they don't do foreign key at all. And it still works okay, so why do we need that foreign keys? For those who maybe don't understand that clearly, foreign keys on the database level ensure the connection between the table. So if there is a foreign key and someone wants to delete the user and that user has a project, MySQL or database engine will throw an error. In this case, if there is no foreign key, someone would be able to delete the user without any error and the project would still remain in the database, which means mismatch in the data with unpredictable consequences. So foreign keys ensure the database schema correct behavior and help us avoid losing some important data.
That's it, a lot of random thoughts about migrations. I hope you learned at least something from that. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and also support the channel by purchasing our quick admin panel Laravel Generator or enrolling in one of my courses at laraveldaily.teachable.com. See you guys on other videos.